this is some fucking bullshit, okay? So, fucking, this, this Arduino, uh, is running, uh, the original C implementation of, of NanoNet, which I basically just wrote in the Arduino, uh, editor. Uh, and all it's doing, right, is just, um, when I, when I let, when I let, uh, that pin out of its place and put it right back in, it sends a nanonet frame to this Arduino, right? And this Arduino is running a Rust implementation of nanonet. Uh, but I haven't, I haven't actually gotten to the full implementation. Um, it's just, uh... It, it, it's, it's, I'm just trying to get there, right? And it's absolute hell. Um, I have to fucking manually set up the interrupt registers. I have to fucking pull this shit to get the, to get, to fucking be able to pass data between the main loop and the interrupt handler. Um, this is pretty much verbatim uh, this so this is the is the full function right and then the actual bit that does anything is Basically this. Um, so, yeah, we, we have to we have to digital read the data pin, right? Which of course means the the pin itself, because of how AVR HAL uses Rust's type system, <laughs> um, it has to be in this special static area up here, right? Um, and we basically just try to get that and check if it's high. Uh, I could probably just void unwrap this, actually. We probably don't need the if let. Uh, but then it gets this cell. One, both of these, actually, just here and here. Gets these cells, which also let you store data that both functions can access. And then pretty much just, you know... The Rx bit, this this whole line here sets Rx bit to true if if the if the pin is high, right? Same here, and then uh, we just kind of move it over by one, shift it, um, and then and then we add in the next bit, pretty pretty clear, and we set the new bit, uh, and then so that that's basically the interrupt done, and let me be clear, this was hours of work, I think. Let me actually check. Yeah, I've been working on this for about two hours. Um, of course, this interrupt, in order to make it the interrupt handler, you have to use this fucking macro tag, which was somewhat undocumented, or at least I couldn't find it by browsing through the documentation the amount that I did um, I had to just find an example uh, and copy it from there and then I had to do this to enable the interrupt this is the equivalent of uh, actually this line right here uh, attach interrupt is provided by Arduino so you don't have to manually manipulate these registers um, but basically I'm setting the interrupt, the external interrupt zero to be rising with this, uh, EI CRA to three, and then I'm just enabling it at all with EI MSK. Um, gotta do all that. We have to actually enable interrupts at all. Um, but that, that that's kind of the, that's kind of the hard bit, I think. Because now, um, now that I have that interrupt working, the rest of this should hypothetically be straightforward. Um, 
at the moment, I just have uh, pin 13, which is the built-in LED set as an output and set low initially. And we have buff pause and checking is a little flag. Uh, buff pause is, uh, well, here. Um, each time through this loop, we just figure out if there's a new bit and we get, we, th this is basically just uh, accessing these mutexes, right? Because fuck you. Um, we split that the buffer into high and low bytes. Um, and then if the buffer is FF01, which is our preamble in the frame, then we turn on the LED. So as, once it detects that a frame is being sent, it turns the LED on. Then um, if, the, if the last byte, basically, um, that was received is OX03, which is our end of text, um, then we turn on checking and we set our buff pause to zero. Uh, and once we've done that, while it's checking, if there's been a new bit, we unset the new bit flag and increase the buff pause by one. Um, and that's just tracking how many bits basically have happened since we got this end of text. And if, if it's been 16, AKA gotten through the CRC and to the ending because we had actually gotten one byte of the CRC because this is checking the, the high byte. So the CRC is actually in that zero zero there, but we chopped that off for the high buffer. Um, so basically once it, it, it waits for the CRC and then the ending byte, and if that ending byte is there, then uh, we turn off the LED. So basically this is when it detects a frame is being sent, it turns on the LED, and then when the frame is done being sent, it turns off the LED. And this was fairly simple to do once I finally fucking had the interrupts figured out. But, of course, I, I can't even know if I've gotten the interrupts figured out until I've written this and it works. But it does, in fact, work. So this is going to start transmitting at about 100 uh, bits per second. And this bottom LED here, underneath the power LED is going to turn on after the first 16 bits and uh, then I'll turn off when it's done. So if I just do like, there we go, it's on and now it's off. <sighs> Two fucking hours, dog. Two goddamn hours. You know, I should also point out uh, that, you know, you know, Ezra, why is this so difficult for you? I mean, it's it's fairly self-explanatory, you know. Like this isn't really all that bullshit. It's just a, it's just a special implementation of a mutex. The, 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 like rather than being for different threads, it's just you know in order to get it, you have to be in in a interrupt free zone, a critical fucking what's it called? Goddamn critical section or whatever, you know, and then, and then once you're in there, you just, you know, you fucking borrow the mutex and, you know, it's, it's whatever, it's all good, I don't, I don't see the problem, and, you know, you gotta set the interrupt registers manually, but that's not so hard, I mean, you, you know how to, you do how to do that, right, you have programmed an Arduino before, okay, so number one, no, I haven't programmed an Arduino without the fucking Arduino IDE before, um, so, so this was, this was fucking fun, uh, number two, uh, in order, if you're gonna do this, you have to use a fucking specific nightly version of Rust, and there's no goddamn Rust language server available for it. So I have basically no fucking clue what I'm doing. I can't just fucking like, oh, oh, here we have uh, uh, the, the peripherals. Let me just control space to autocomplete. Uh, what, what, what's going on? I have no autocomplete because I have no fucking Rust language server. Uh, so I have to fucking figure all this shit out by actually looking at the documentation, which I fucking never do, and half of this shit is buried. Um, you, you, I mean, well, I mean, it's not even that it's buried, right? You can find it, but you just have to know what you're looking for, and in order to do that, you basically just have to read through goddamn examples, and, and like, yeah, okay, whatever. That, that, that'd be fine, right? Except normally I'd read through the example and then like try to copy it. And as I'm doing so, you know, like, oh, val zero zero 
zero three here you know I'm, I'm at w isc or you know even here w isc zero right like over over here this is an arduino uno example right but it's not using an external interrupt it's using the timer interrupt right um but then this over here is an arduino leonardo uh example which is using the external interrupt but it's using interrupt six right and so you know, okay, like here, here, you gotta set, you gotta set these bits. Now, number one, what the fuck is this, right? I don't know what this means. Um, I don't know what this means, right? Uh, uh apparently, oh yeah, th this would, this would be enabling interrupt six, basically. W int bits, and then basically the sixth bit. Uh, but I know that now, uh, over here, you know, I, I could, you know, basically copy the same thing. E -R e -I -C -R -B actually ends up being E-I-C-R-A over here. That's fine. Uh, but, you know, I could do W and then like, oh, int. And, well, here it shows. Or, no, this is the ISC. So, you know, even there, like, I could just control space normally. But, no, I just have to know the ISC. And, you know, it's ISC 6 over here, but, you know, it's interrupt 6, so it's a reasonable assumption that it's ISC 0, but I don't fucking know, because I have nothing telling me whether I'm right. And then, and then fucking, uh, what, I want to set that to 2? Well, I, I don't fucking know. If I come over here to the actual documentation, which I then have to fucking find, this is not necessarily obvious either. Then I can see, okay, they're just setting the bits, but I can also, uh, here, low level, any logical change, falling edge, rising edge, and, you know, I can manually type this over here. I realize I'm just, I'm just getting mad that I don't have a goddamn, my goddamn IDE features, but do you know how many fucking hours, days I spent getting those IDE features to work in Vim? Like, fuck, I, I, I want them, but I can't fucking have them because this fucking nightly build of Rust doesn't have the Rust language server. Uh, it's fucking, it's bullshit, okay? And then over here, they're just, they're going to the full interrupt, uh, enable, interrupt mask, external interrupt mask register, right? And, and they're just setting the sixth bit. How the fuck am I supposed to know that they're doing that? Like, maybe I just recognize it normally, but, you know, over here, they actually, you know, they actually do have an API to just select the individual interrupt that you want to enable and set the bit, you know, it, like, it, so I've added this documentation here, so hopefully if anyone is trying to copy what I'm doing for some goddamn reason, uh, you know, you have the link to the thing, you, I'll probably put in a link to this as well, probably put in, I'm probably going to put in a bunch of documentation in this, because it's, it's hell to find, especially without a goddamn Rust language server. <sighs> I'm just, I'm just pain, okay? It's pain. And, and let me also point out, this interrupt thing, the interrupts were the hardest part of the original C implementation, too. Let me be clear. Mainly making them modular, right? Because on the Arduino Uno, uh, or in this case, you know, the Arduino Nano, uh, you have two external interrupts on pins two and three. Uh, and so it would be reasonable to say, oh, well, we could have two... Uh, nanonet interfaces, basically, you know, one on pin two as the clock pin and one on pin three as the clock pin. And, you know, I, and then, you know, with that, uh, pin four is data, pin five is the second data. Uh, but of course, in order to actually do that, I have to have, you, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm attaching an interrupt, right? And that needs a static function, right? It, you, you can't, you can't do this, uh, you can't, like, have the, the interrupt, uh, the ISR function. You can't have that as a function in your class here. So, you know, it has to be static functions, and, you know, b because interrupts are, like, totally out of any scope, I just have to have, you know, the receive buffer and the, and the new bit flag. I just have to have those sitting there. Uh, and I have to have two fucking interrupt service routines, um, and I just attach them if, if I, if I, uh, set up, you know, if, if, if I pass in true for is second Nick, then it attaches the second interrupt service, uh, routine 
to the to the second clock pin or if I if I pass in false then it gives you the first thing and the clock pin right and so that's like a pain and you know whatever but over here it's even worse because I can't I can't even uh, I can't even do this right I can't I can't even have it where oh when we construct the nano net object we you know attach the interrupt using whichever interrupt service routine you know and so that way you know if you if you only construct your first nick you still have your external interrupt on pin three available it hasn't been attached but you know no no over here interrupt service routines are statically defined because you know AVR how they actually say like oh this is kind of non ideal it'd be nice if there was a better way to do it but this is how it works for now um, but fuck dog this is gonna be I, I the whole point of this was to be like to be like easier to like deal with you know as a as a modular thing and like I you know you could pass in you know hell you, I mean I the original idea was like oh you know, you, you, set, you set, you get your peripherals, right? And then, oh, you get your pins and we'll just like say pin D2 and we'll pass that in, you know, D2 and D4, pin D2 being a, uh, an interrupt, the, the clock pin and, and the data pin and the, this one has an interrupt on it. You know, we'll just pass that in like D2 dot into interrupt and we'll just pass that in to our nano net object so that, you know, it takes ownership of it and you're not going to use it for anything else. And, uh, you know, I was, I was kind of worried, like, am I going to be able, you know, this, this ownership based, uh, flipping here, can I, can I change the pin mode at runtime, right? Which is a thing that is necessary to do over here, right? Because you got your fucking, uh, your send byte, like, where is it? What am I, what am I doing here? Uh, da, 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 da. Oh wait, no, it's send frame over here, right? Uh, the first thing it does is the collision avoidance, but then basically the next thing it does is it changes the pin mode at runtime, um, and then you know later on changes them back. But you know I was worried if I was gonna be able to do that, and you know I can, I can just I can just flip that around whenever um, when I'm storing it for the interrupt register. Uh, I have to store it as an input pin, uh, because basically because I have to store it as something. Might as well leave it in the input mode, which is fair, right? That's actually a really a, a really useful way through the type system of encoding that you know this the data pin should basically always be an input pin unless we are sending a byte, right? Like it. Like in here, I basically just you know in send frame we do the collision avoidance and then uh, and then we we you know we set the pin mode and then we set it we set it back down here. But you know I could just as easily like not do that. But no, it like it, this way if I if I didn't do that it would be immediately obvious because I can't fucking put it in this uh, holder up here without changing the fucking the pin mode right so that that's useful actually but you know i was worried if i was gonna be able to do that and i, ca I can so that's good um but you know fuck this fucking even more statically defined interrupt like i don't i don't know if there's a way to conditionally change this at all i mean i i'll look but i i don't know this, this this whole thing would just be a lot easier if I had a fucking language server, but you know, I, I don't, so I just fucking suffer. <sighs> God damn it. If I, if I, if I were gonna modularize this, right, probably what I would do, and you know, I don't know why I'm just fucking saying this out loud, because I'll probably just do it. Um, the, this, this whole function here will probably be like a macro. Right, because macro macros aren't that fucking hard. I mean, you basically just you basically just you know put in you know uh, like a fucking this is from a uh, this is from cross term, but I, I'm like like here like this is just a quick macro to implement display for um or no it's impl from it's impl from 
Uh, this is just a real simple macro that uh, Crossterm uses in uh, in its uh, in its in its error type, right? So that it can basically implement from some error type for its error type, and it literally just like wait, uh, yeah, it like it's literally just you know you do impl from and then in as the arguments you put in uh, what type is that you're implementing it for and how to implement it and it basically just fills this in and does that with the thing like it, like macros would be really simple hypothetically i could just like put this the, these interrupt um the 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 code for the interrupt service routine i just put that in a macro like with the uh like where like when you uh, create your your nanonet object, like how I have here, I don't actually know how you would uh, exactly do that, but you know, I, I, I you know, just hypothetically wouldn't be too difficult. You know, I like just however you initialize the nanonet object, it's actually a macro that you have to call, and it gives you the interrupts. But you still, it's just a pain. It's just, this whole thing is, this whole thing is retarded. I don't know why I'm doing it, but you know, it's fun. That's probably why I'm doing it. Or, you know, or, you know, you just, you could do the, the like obvious alternative of basically what AVR Hal has done where like these, these, uh, the, 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 the crate itself has like or the the github repository has like a bunch of sub crates inside of it if this could load please come on uh it has a bunch of crates inside of it right which like actually contain board specific implementations of shit. And I guess I could do that and have like, I don't know, like, okay, here we have the like Arduino Uno uh, sub crate that makes it, that lets you actually fucking use NanoNet, right? And then like, also there's like a feature to enable like, the second interrupt or some shit like that. Like, I don't fucking know. Um, it's, it's just ridiculous. This is ridiculous. I'm, you know what? I'm thinking, I'm thinking in the future too much. I should just fucking actually get the, 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 the system implemented because, you know, as of right now, all it does is it lights up the LED while it's sending and then or while it's just, while it is in the middle of a frame and then it turns it off when it gets to the end of the frame. Like, that's all it does. I should really just fucking do the thing, but now I keep fucking procrastinating and doing this instead. I'm just gonna do that. Goddamn, finally, uh, fucking got receive working. If I do it again, it's at a, a hundred baud, so. Pretty quick, and it works. God damn! Finally, is that a goddamn homestuck reference?